intentions or not, man, that's on them. You know what I mean? But, but, but I think that today has shown that, you know, a lot of times, man, like I feel like today we so shocked because as a whole, we so used to it not working that mm-hmm. that the whole vibe of today is like, damn, so do we go back out there and, and protest? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Because we so used to not even having the result. You know what I'm saying? So now, like, having one, it's like, oh, it worked. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, so I'm, I say that to say, you know, I mean, I I, I think that it, it played its part. You know, they played it on the news. It got recognition. You know, like, and, and today we saw that whatever, everything everybody did up until today, that shit worked. Word. Now, Eric, you dropped out, but I'm going to ask you the same thing. How do you feel about the rioting and looting where you're at? Um, I don't know if you're, you're in L.A. as well. Yeah. Um, yo, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, man, it's interesting because I've had so many different thoughts. You know, like, I think for me, I'm really new to actually, like, trying to dive in something like this. You know, I'm really, really, really like, yo, I'm the music guy. I make music, you know, but this time, since we had so much time, I ain't had nothing else to do. So, man, I've been going on an emotional roller coaster, you know. I think uh, my my first part and my first, uh, I mean, the first part of your question, we got a, we got a store on Melrose. So, my first uh, position and stance on it was a victim standpoint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I was like, yo, we can't be, you know, this is the store and they, like they're going too far. Like what's the store got to do with it? So I had, I, I played that part. And then the fact I went over there after the day they did all the looting on Melrose and our store wasn't touched, you know, like they didn't, they didn't touch our store. It's crazy. Like they just skipped over that joint. So after that, I removed myself from the victim standpoint and then I was like starting to understand like oh like they just trying to you know their intention is the white man's dollar you know what i mean they like yo the white man's dollar da, 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 da. and you know after i kind of saw where they were coming from it was like yo we just trying to we like i put myself in their shoes you know what i mean and, and it was just like yo they don't they have nothing to lose you know, at this point and where they at in life, they don't have nothing to lose. We fighting for change. And this is if this is what we got to do to get some attention. If this is what we got to do to finally get to get me a TV. If this is what we got to do to show some form of equality to, to start the ripple in the ripples in the ocean. You know, and like Neem said, this is this is what I do. Maybe they don't do the politics. Maybe they don't. For me, I make music. I wrote I wrote a song about it, you know, mm-hmm. to, to people that do their uh, legislative uh, 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 background and have all that they do that so it's kind of like i think if i had a, if i had if something had happened i probably like with the stuff i probably would have still been like damn that's my stuff but mm-hmm. it's weird because not everything was all good and then my mindset immediately transferred to well we got to do what we got to do <laughs> you know what I'm saying? so exactly. it's just a it's just an emotional roller coaster for me what do you guys in your opinion think will be the um i should say What's going to solve the racism problem in America? I know it's a that's a big question, but what do you guys think are some of the steps we could take to get this thing solved? Because this is a, at the root of the problem, I believe, is racism. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, to keep it a thousand with you, I just think like if if everybody wanted to get rid of racism, then it would just have to start with just parents just leaving their kids alone and, and, and teaching their kids and that'll just be the way to recycle it out. But to keep it a thousand, I don't I just don't see that happening. I think mm-hmm. I think I think saying like getting rid of racism is like getting rid of you know you liking the songs that you like or don't like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's mm-hmm. that's you know what I mean? Now the 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 violence Due to 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 racism, you know what I mean. Like even that, like you know, that shit is gonna be here. But 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 the police and 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 people that are working for public and government, they they can't be racist and implement 
racism in the government and public service. All right. All right, yeah, so you talked about um, your record that you wrote, Eric, enough. You wrote that in um, dedication to George Floyd. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So I actually wrote, um, I actually wrote that song like maybe two weeks ago. Mm. I wrote it after everything that happened with my Aubrey, and then like my, I had just wrote it. I didn't. It was crazy because I didn't even intend on like just to put it out because I we just write songs, you know. Like I just another song, another song, and that was on my chest that day. I went home. I listened to the next day. Like man, I love this song, and then as everything picked up once i saw the george floyd video and the brianna taylor i didn't see that video either so once i had seen that one it was like yo it was just boiling in me you know and even though me and neem we really got a structure the way we do things you know what i mean but i was like yo i think this one need to just go this one just need to go and neem was just like all right let's put it out you know and it just made sense like with everything like the alignment like the protesters and like we was already we already had the music and I think God does things and you know puts certain things in order and you know it's just up to the people to actually pull the trigger when it's their time like we was just kind of ready for the moment but I just when I was writing it was just a real pace of pain you know like just just seeing it happen over and over and I just kind of wanted to touch on everything in a song that still felt like we had the power Awesome. COVID-19, how has that affected you guys' business and, um, you know, working out here now? Like, how has it changed it? How, how have you made adjustments? Man, we just been uh, able to, honestly, for for us, nothing stopped. We've just been able to continue because I do everything at home or at the studio or we got in-house engineers, we got in-house art. We got in-house videographers, mm -hmm. you know, everything. So we've been still releasing music and we plan on honestly releasing the project this week. But with everything happened, we just pushed it back. And, um, you know, we're able to still maneuver on that side with the streaming and the digital and all that. But as far as like, you know, street promotions and travel and radio, it's just kind of been taking that. It took that away. But. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we got a strong fan base, you know, to to kind of rock with us through all this. So it's just me making music I love, me coming up with great plans and ideas to get it to the people in the proper timing and make sure everything is where it needs to be. And, you know, we're able to really do a lot over the phones or either interviews like this, a lot, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we didn't really get to us too much. We made the best of it, at least. Yeah, now, I heard you talking in the interview um, that you were working on confessions too. Uh oh, is, is that uh, something that's something we can look forward to? What's the status of that? That was a couple of years ago, though. So, right, can you put some information. I mean, it's interesting. Like they've been touching on that topic and playing with that topic a lot. I mean, that title, um, and I know the fans been playing with that title a lot, but Usher hasn't confirmed. You know, I just know that. A lot of talks have been about it, but we definitely working, you know, towards towards this new album. Um, I'm just not sure what the title of it is going to be. You got you know what y'all got your new album out now, Optimal Music. I got a chance to listen to that joint a few times. Eleven tracks. I really enjoyed the body of work. I salute on the project. Thank Talk you. about that a little bit. We went into that. Um, what roles you guys played? I know Neiman, uh my publicist was saying you had a brainchild behind this operation. You know what I'm saying? So can you talk about the uh, what went into optimal music? And even if you don't mind giving us a little bit of that brainchild that yeah, you were behind the Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know, I just, in the beginning, uh, when we started, like, 2010, you know, we was doing a lot of the creative together, putting the albums together, like, you know, fresh out of seeing Usher do his album and Chris Brown do his album. We were doing his album, you know, we kind of quickly implemented like a lot of what they did to create their album into what to what to create our albums. And uh, we used to, you know, do a lot of it together in the beginning. And then, um, you know, Eric, he, you know, he kind of wanted to tell, get his story off of, you know, and make, you know, like get his, just get his story out. And, and um, I support it. 
and um, wanted him, you know, wanted him to really, I really wanted him to be hands on with a lot of things, you know, and, and try to teach him a lot of the things that, you know, a lot of the other artists don't really get to, you know, handle in their careers. Um, and so, you know, he took a really, really, you know, big hands on approach to, to it early. And I just felt like I wanted to get back in there and, you know, just like the, since the consumer was like ready for something like this, just make it be known like, yo, it's me and his project. You know what I mean? And then.